I'm Hugh Broom. I'm a fourth generation farmer uh, from just down the road. Uh, we have a farm between Dorking and Westcott. Um, my great grandfather came here in 1897 from Devon, like a lot of farmers around here, they migrated in uh, to catch the, uh, well it was the, the milk trade in Dorking. He came from Devon uh, to Dorking to do that because there wasn't enough room on his farm uh, where he was at home uh, and we're still there. We're not milking cows anymore. Uh, currently we uh, farm about 320 acres, it's not massive, uh, 60 acres of that is woodland. Um, we grow beef cattle, uh, we have sheep, a breeding flock on the farm. Um, we have a firewood business uh, where we take the wood out of our woods and turn it into logs. Uh, we have an asparagus enterprise, uh, so we have a very small area of asparagus, about four acres. It's probably the most profitable four acres on the farm. Um, and that gets sold locally um, because it works um, and it's a good sort of local thing to do. Uh, what else do we do on the farm? We run events on the farm. Um, we do uh, kids uh, growing project on the farm we've done that for 11 years now we're a local school they come out every year um, they have a, a strip of land and each child has a two by uh, one meter plot uh, we get the seeds from a seed company and these year what are they year three year four kids uh, they over the summer term they come out every Thursday and they grow their veg and, and, and they grow their wildflowers and if it rains they get it and if there's a drought then it's a pretty harsh lesson in reality <laughs> uh, because there's no irrigation uh, so we're on year 11 of that um, we also have on the farm a lot of footpaths uh, we probably have somewhere between 100 and 150 dogs uh, or dog walkers a day use the farm from either end so we have to manage that uh, we have environmental stewardship on the farm in various guises we've been involved in various schemes for the last 15 16 years ranging from hedge laying replanting hedges uh, buffer strips for uh, of sort of wildlife um, and uh, wild bird uh, strips to sort of keep the birds going through the winter. So we do lots of things like that. Um, and then in amongst all that, we're actually doing some farming. Uh, so there's quite a lot going on. Uh, the latest thing we're doing on the farm, which is just being commissioned at the moment, is um, six megawatts of battery storage, which is connected to the grid. From the outside, just looks like a 2,000 square foot sheep shed, but inside there's containers full of all sorts of things, uh, which is a big lumbering great German man scratching his head at the moment trying to get it to finally work but I'm told it will do fairly soon. The idea of that is the company rents that space off us, it gives us revenue into our business and uh, keeps your lights on and smooths out your power demand as you have more and more devices, more and more electric cars, more and more servers running to keep your life going and it will become more common. So we're doing that as well. So we've got lots going on and I think the, the six megawatts of battery storage, the environmental stewardship stuff and just growing the food that we do highlight the fact that we can deliver so much as an industry, uh, particularly in the, on the sort of climate change, climate change agenda. Another thing we do uh, in terms of mitigating our emissions, we use, as does my neighbour and several other local farmers, we use about 4,000 tonnes of food waste digestate from an anaerobic digester in London. Uh, it's like rocket fuel when you put it on the soil. Uh, the grass grows really well. It's perfect nutrient cycling. Um, it's... I've seen an improvement, I would say, in the health of the soil in the last four years we've used it. Um, and it's just one step we can take to sort of improve our efficiency and cut down on our dependence on um, sort of carbon-heavy products like ammonium nitrate, which are vital because you lot wouldn't be here today without them. <laughs> you wouldn't be paying less than 10% of your average family income on your food costs versus 40 or 50% 40, 50 years ago if you didn't have ammonium nitrate. So whilst we talk about these things that they have caused some damage and, or may or may not have caused damage, we also remember that we wouldn't be here without them. Um, so we, I take the view that we've got to move forward and we've got to evolve. At the same time, we're doing all the environmental stuff within the farming context on the farm, with our beef cattle, with the grass we grow. We try where we can to use the latest genetics to get the most efficient, uh, efficiency we can out of what we're growing. Whilst it's lovely to have old breeds doing this, that and the other here, and there's a place for them to do that, if, for example, we want to cut our emissions on... On, on, on beef production, well, the simplest way is half the time it takes you to finish the beef animal. No brainer. Um, so it's just simple things like that. In terms of where we're going, I think there's a fantastic future for agriculture. There is a challenge with Brexit, it's, uh, undoubtedly. However, the technological advance that I think is going to happen on farm in the next 
uh, decade uh, is going to be phenomenal. When we talk about ammonium nitrate going in all the wrong places, it shouldn't. When we took, move, move to a micro level in terms of robotics and the technology we're now starting to see prototype, it's phenomenally efficient and phenomenally precise. So there's a bright future there. We can deliver lots, uh, lots through the landscape and enhance the landscape. Do we need another national park? We don't need the bureaucracy of a national park. We need to make sure that the money is spent on running national parks, runs the fantastically efficient local Surrey Hills office we have now. And it doesn't, you know, 12 million quid in that office would be pretty phenomenal. And if we're going to open up our countryside even more, we need to make sure we invest in the infrastructure to do that, whether that's broadband, communications, roads, uh, and we look after the, the rest of society that lives around the landscape as well as those that are coming in to visit. So it's, it's, it's not simple, uh, but it is doable. Uh, so, yes, that's my view. Thank you.